Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Well, you've heard me say that uh, when the central bank cuts their rates, that we would probably see mortgage rates go up. And this is on the backdrop of me seeing a lot of agents out there on social media saying, central bank's going to cut rates next month in September. And when they do, buyers are going to come out and the bidding wars are going to start again. You need to get in front of this because there's going to be more competition. And I have disagreed with that. And now I can tell you for sure that the buyers are not rushing out. That Yes, the central bank lowered rates by 50 basis points. And yes, mortgage rates actually went up when they did that. Now, I'm not saying this to say, hey, guess what? Rick was right. But... This is pretty easy to predict, and I'm going to show you right now that's going to make me stick my neck out and say prices are going down this fall. There isn't going to be any upward pricing pressure, and I'm going to show you why I think that. And it shouldn't be surprising to those of you that have been following the numbers on here that we've seen some weakness. And this is the Cromford Market Index, and probably just the easiest thing to tell you to look at is look at all the red arrows. Look at all the cities that have fallen. I won't go down and read the whole list, but Fountain Hills and Paradise Valley lead the top of the pack. Chandler's Crumford Market Index is down to 136. They went down 2% or 11%, and uh, everybody's continuing to slide. And here's why. This is active listings, and they're climbing. Now, they're, I'm going to get rid of the years that we shouldn't even compare to anymore. And if I click on the right screen here... It's going up seasonally. You know, people are putting their homes on the market now, not by large amounts. But the gap between the number of new listings that are coming on and the number of contracts that are being written um, is continuing to grow. The gap is. The number of contracts, it's amazing. It's staying right there when I track it on the seven-day moving average. But we're knocking on 20,000 listings. We're at 19,700. And... Uh, and couple that with the fact that we don't have a whole lot of listings under contract. And you can see where they're at right here. Pretty, pretty low historically. Those big dips that you see here, these are holiday weekends. That's Labor Day. So you can see that uh, listings under contract are not lighting the world on fire. So what's happening is this. We're seeing people putting their homes on the market because they kind of want to get them sold before the holidays. This was something that they have probably had planned all year and said, well, summer's never a good time. So maybe we can put it on the market now towards the end of September. And it's growing by about 200 a week as far as the number of listings that are out there. The number of new listings not going up by much, but it doesn't have to. Now, when I was tracking the seven-day moving average before I was subtracting canceled listings and expired listings, and I looked at the percentage, I saw that when we got below 65%, 65% of the new listings that came on went under contract, that we had pricing pressure on the downside. Today, I can tell you we're at 64%. Now, when I'm adding those numbers up and I'm subtracting the um, the number of cancels and expireds, it gives me a different calculation. It puts us at 80%. We've been running about 90% for the past couple of months. So definitively, we're going to see pricing pressure on the downside. Not a crash. We didn't last time, but we saw list pricing start to, start to come down. And let's take a look today and see what we're seeing for list pricing. And they're... It's kind of been a little resilient uh, right here. You can see this is average list price per square foot active listings. But if I were to filter out, and I can't on this one, I may be able to find another chart and show you. But if I go below a million dollars, this list price per square foot is just a straight line. It hasn't been going up or down all year. Just stuck there. We have mortgage rates did this. They're 6.15 the morning that the Fed announced that they were going down by 50 basis points. Before the announcement, we were at 6.11. After the announcement, 6.15. So um, believe it or not, the number was baked in the cake. So we like to say. So what is surprising, not surprising, 
But what the bond market is waiting for now and what they were listening for was any indication that maybe Chairman Powell would say, well, we may continue this aggressive stance. In other words, he was asked, now that you've gone down 50, does that tell us that you're probably going to go down 50 again and then 50 again and maybe even 75? And he didn't bite. He said, well, we're going to look at the data. Uh, how aggressive we get um, all depends on the numbers that we see. We're seeing unemployment start to go up, but it's still good. It's still resilient. We're seeing inflation making favorable moves. But like we said a couple of years ago, he said, we want to be patient and we're going to continue to be patient. Well, that told bond traders, uh, don't expect massive rate cuts in the next couple of meetings. And it doesn't look like that's that's going to pan out. So we're seeing um, patience on the side of the Federal Reserve, and we're not seeing a lot of uh, um, a lot of moves that tell the bond traders, "Boy, your rates are going to be really low." Well, maybe not. Um, I, I rode with an Uber driver this morning, this afternoon. Just just got back from uh, Nebraska visiting some friends, and and he said that. Uh, he goes, well, we're probably going to see rates in the low fives next year. And I said, I don't know. It's hard for me to predict, but I think that's pretty aggressive. I think I think we're going to be stuck here where we are for a while. That's not a bad thing if you're a seller or a buyer. Sellers, your market is not so bleak that you can't sell your home. And buyers, you can take your time. This is annual price change, price per square foot by list price range, the change in the annual average price. So you can see here that the on the top end, that over 1 million has gone up 21%, 7.5 to 10, that's over 10 million, excuse me, 12%. Uh, then you get down here and there, between four and 500,000 only went up about a <coughs> percent and a half. This price print range here between 350 and 400,000, which really is almost non-existent except for a few areas has gone up three percent so nothing really lighting the world on fire and that's that's annual so but we're seeing prices now i think starting next week you're going to see people start to reduce their prices the deeper we get into october towards halloween if their homes aren't moving you're going to see them pulling them down you're going to see them pulling them down so they can get closed before the end of November or closed before Thanksgiving. And then we're going to see a major slowdown from Thanksgiving through Christmas. The people that are waiting for the elections to be over are not going to jump back in the market on November 6th, despite who wins. The people that are waiting, they're still going to wait. I mean, they're just waiting because they've got jitters over the election, but uh, um, they were probably not bent on buying anyway so that market is just going to slow down that's about a third of buyers out there are actually saying that i'm waiting till after the election even had that conversation with my uber driver he goes boy i don't know it all depends on who gets elected what happened to housing and i said eh, in the long term maybe but you know what it's never changed anything yet oh but this year it's a lot more contentious so i said well you know all we can do is wait and see and see what happens so that's my october prediction folks prices <laughs> are going to start coming down, not significantly. Um, he did ask a refinancing question. When when should I refinance if I were to do that? And I go, get a hold of your lender and let him know what dollar amount you're looking for. I want to save 500 bucks a month. And then let him call you and say, hey, rates are the point now where I can save you 500. I said, don't, don't bang your head against the computer every day checking the rates. Have a mortgage broker shop it, check it for you. Get your records in order and be ready to pull the trigger should we have any surprising moves and ask about fees don't click online and look if you're trying to refinance get with a mortgage broker i highly recommend that and let them shop rates for you go about your business and just wait for the phone call bob sally think it's a good time to refinance i found you a great product with low fees i think i can save you about 500 bucks a month but it doesn't look like it's anything you got to hurry out and do right now because when interest rates start going down like they are now, buyers are going to wait. And they're going to say, they're starting. That means it's going to continue. Why am I going to jump in now? So they're waiting. Unless that perfect house comes along, then they're going to jump in. But for the most part, buyers are optimistic that rates are going to be lower going in the next year. 
Sellers are still optimistic that they can get their asking price, and many are, many aren't. So that's the market that we're in. So muddling along, it's going to be slow for a while. Just get used to this. It's going to be a broker record for a while. I'll let you know if there's any surprises. You have any questions, please shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It's got some gems in there. Take care.